Hair's looking cute today, not gonna lie, girl. We looking cute. Hi guys, I'm Monica, and welcome back to my channel, Winnie Reads, where I talk about books and things. And it's really weird today because I am the only person in my house today. This hasn't happened in so long. So it kind of almost feels weird to like film. One moment, let's get that autofocus to go away. So today's video is another short video. I'm kind of enjoying making short videos, which is funny because now I'm gonna go into this whole tangent about how I like making short videos, therefore making this video longer than it needs to be. But the thing is, I think uh, sometimes you don't wanna watch 40 minute videos and that's fine. So I'm gonna make a couple of shorter videos throughout, you know, just not compromising what I want to say, but just finding ways of saying it that doesn't last as long. Also, I might start um, like cutting my wrap-ups in half because I, again, for somebody that reads more than five books a month, uh, wrap-ups tend to be a really long time. So let's just get right into this video, which is books that will haunt you long after you read them. Of course, what is haunting for me might not be haunting for you. So it just kind of depends on you. But these are books that have stayed with me and that I rarely talk about in my channel, but they have like, like you know how sometimes you're kind of like just laying in bed and thinking, wow, that book, that one book or something like that, like it pops into your mind. That's what I'm talking about, that kind of haunting feeling. I tried to pick books that you haven't seen before, so let's just get started with the first one, and it's Crónica de una muerte anunciada para Gabriel García Márquez. Now, this is translated into English. I believe the title is Chronicle of an Announced Death, or an Announced Death's Chronicle. I'll put the picture of the English version right here. It's really easy to find. And I read this book over 17 years ago, and I still can quote parts of it because it's that good. It's the story of a man who basically everybody in town knows he's going to die. He's gonna get killed, he's gonna die. It's, it's literally the chronicle of an announced death. The only person that doesn't know is him and he spends the whole book kind of visiting people that already kind of treat him like he's going to die but he has no idea and then the end of it, of course he does die, like it's an announced death. It's, it's like the both die in the end by Adam Silvera. Like you know they're gonna die. But yeah, um, this book is incredible. I love how Gabriel Garcia Marquez just like takes you on an emotional, weird ass ride. And like I said, the, the, like there are lines in this book that I can still quote 17, 18 years after I read it. So I actually really, really, um, love this book and I recommend that you pick it up. It's super short and I would go with this one instead of going with 100 Years of Solitude because that one's a little bit longer and it's a little bit crazier. So yeah, this book is really haunting. It's a really gruesome book, The Death of uh, Santiago Nazar, the main character, is really brutal. So just watch out for that one. Then I have another book that I read at the beginning of this year and it's called The Dark Beneath the Eyes. Now I'm gonna make a big trigger warning here because this book deals with possession but it also deals with mental health issues and whether it's a possession or mental health issue and I know a lot of people will not be okay with that. But I find this book extremely interesting, extremely haunting. I love how it was written. I love how the demon, like how they, how, how the author managed to write a demon within a book that doesn't sound like stereotypical, you know? Um, the story is about a girl, her name is Marianne. Marianne stopped dancing in a very dramatic way. She was a really good dancer and now she's possessed. And I'm not like, this is not a spoiler or anything. Straight up possessed. And another thing I want to mention is this is one of those rare uh, sapphic romances where it's not tragic so I mean I don't think that's a spoiler to say that it's not tragic it might be but I feel that we need to say those things nowadays because all sapphic romances tend to be tragic 
this is a beautiful sapphic romance this is a beautiful story about somebody trusting you and about trusting somebody that you barely know but is the only person that listens to you and sometimes i find myself thinking about this book a lot and it's really haunting the it's very atmospheric i every time there's like a big thunderstorm i think about this book because it talks a lot about water and thunderstorms and, th and things like that so i really really recommend this book up next a book that when i when i first read it i was like i'm not sure this is gonna be even like a top like a, like a three star and yet i think about this book more than i think about almost any book and that is the girl with all the gifts the girl with all the gifts is the story of uh basically a zombie apocalypse and now we have these little kids that are zombies but that still remain somewhat human and it's the story of well it's the story of figuring out how to survive in a world where basically survival is just not gonna happen and uh i just i don't want to say anymore because i went into it just thinking it was a, it was a zombie book and I, and when i when I first read it i was like oh my god this is kind of boring i kind of don't like it i and then the ending happened and i was like uh i don't i don't like it that much but then i spent time with the book and this book comes up in my mind constantly like every now and then i'm like oh my god that scene from that book oh my god that scene from that book and that's going to be the thing with all of these books it's just they haunt me literally <laughs> like i'll be just calm in my room just chill and then this book just pops into my head so i really recommend that you read this i didn't really like the movie but I really, really enjoyed the book. All right, up next, a book that I wanted to arrive for that seven on Sunday I did about books that I never talk about because I read this book a couple of years ago and every, every again, every now and then I'm like, wow, that book was really good. Even though that while I was reading it, I was confused and I wasn't sure if I was liking it. But then every time I think about this book, I'm like, that was Good. that was a good reading experience and that is the changeling by victor lavelle this is i don't even know how to explain the story this is the story about a couple they have a wonderful life together but there's kind of like witchcraft thrown in there and they lose their baby uh they the the wife also dies but does she really die then the husband has to go through this whole process of finding her finding the baby are they alive are they dead how do we get here there are witches there is witchcraft it's just amazing it's such a good book i don't i don't even know how to explain it but i find myself sometimes always thinking like i wonder what happened after the end of that book and i think that that's like the, it like you should feel like that like books should stay with you i think and this book i read it like three years ago and i just bought it you're gonna see it in an upcoming haul because it just stayed with me like it's that good and i just i i, I can't like praise it enough for its uh fabulism and it's i don't know it's weird way of making you think that the world that these people live in is actually believable but it's totally not believable and i just love how it's written and again i it's every now and then i think this would be an amazing movie this this book was amazing i just i loved every second of it even though i was confused but it just haunts me it it stayed with me for so long up next i have some books that i have mentioned before so i'm gonna mention them a little bit quicker I have Station Eleven by uh, Emily St. John Mandel. Now, this, of course, is, is, a, is it's a book about a virus that destroys the world. But here's the thing about this book. The thing about this book that haunts me is not like the future elements in it, like after the pandemic that happened in the book, but it's the past. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like humans. It's Again, it's a story about humans. Well, of course, of course it is. But it's just, there's something so real and raw about how they explain the deaths of the people with the virus. 
And there is a specific scene in this book where I constantly think about it because I think the way it was written was really beautiful and the way that it's interwoven with a comic book that somebody is writing, I just find that incredible. I, I think about this book all the time. I really, really love it and I would 100% recommend that you pick it up. If you're kind of sensitive about the pandemic thing, don't pick it up now. But if you are not so sensitive about it, and there's like I keep thinking of scenes about this book that I sometimes like arm in my house and I'm thinking like, wow, that was harsh or that was intense or that was heartbreaking. There's a, there's a particular scene near the end of this book that I'm like, Oof. you know, I, I think we underestimate the ability that we have to communicate with the people that we love and this book kind of delves into that kind of delves into what happens if tomorrow tomorrow the internet boom disappears and you can't go outside because you much you might like die how do you communicate with your brothers sisters mothers mothers fathers lovers and do they know that you loved them till the end like oh that's so harsh that's so harsh and uh it's a beautiful book but it's also a heartbreaking book um i and i just it stayed with me it, it has stayed with me ever since i read it so uh yeah definitely pick this one up not right now if you are a little bit uneasy about the pandemic thing but maybe at some point when things are better you might want to enjoy this book next up sarah waters the little stranger I love this book. I keep thinking about the end of this book over and over again. And I, I didn't I, I don't think I have mentioned before that this book this book is about in the 1930s, so about after the Great War. And what really got me about this book was that there's a doctor in this book that truly believes that everything these people are experiencing in this house is something to do with PTSD from war, something to do with genetics and the fact that he doesn't really believe them and how the main character tries to convey the horror that she's living through and he's just not paying attention. He's like, no, that's just, you know, it's, it's nothing. Forget about it. And it's really tough to read and I don't know, the end of this book is so haunting. There's a scene in this book where somebody just say just says, "Oh, it's you." And you know exactly what they're talking about and and it's so tragic and and sad and it it just haunts you. This book stays with you and and I think that that's to Sarah Waters merit really. So, yeah, I recommend this one too if you want a haunting read. And then finally, another pandemic-ish book. Um, I don't I don't think these books stayed with me because they're pandemic-ish. It's just that they're really well written and that is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. This book is so good. I, I said in my last video that I mentioned it that I would link a video on Cosmic Horror. That's what it's called, Cosmic Horror. Cosmic Horror is basically Lovecraftian horror whereas where you cannot explain what you see therefore it's amorphous and I'm not gonna get into a lot about that because I said I was gonna keep this short but basically this is cosmic horror we never get an explanation of what is seen and I believe the scene with the birds in this book I think that shit haunts me the scene with the dog and just everything just everything this book is so well written it's so beautifully written and if you if you've ever wondered what I think an alien invasion would be like it would probably be like this and I just keep thinking about it that idea of being completely deprived of trust among people and how like you would deal with that that oh I don't know this book oof, this book has haunted me let me tell you all right I just got this off of my shelf because I couldn't not mention it and that is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I think there's a reason why this book haunts me as much as it does and I think it has to do with my 
of Latin American origins and the fact that for us we see magic in a different way than other people do we have a lot of Native American influence a lot of nature magic that we really do believe in I, I, well when I say we I mean the small bubble of people I live around because I can't be a representative for all Latin American people but I know that in Venezuela we believe a lot in nature magic in fact if you're having like a really tough time in your life we always say you need to go to El Cerro de la Vila for somebody to like perform a ritual on you because you're having bad luck but anyway um I was terrified of this book there were I I it's really hard to scare me in, with books because you know it's not like a movie where you're gonna see something but to scare me with books is really difficult and there were times with this book where I just had to close it and also the ending of this book I know that this is controversial but I love the ending of this book I love how open it is I love how we get no answers in the end and that haunts me but in a good way so I really I really I, you know what pick up night film it's so 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 good I love it I love it and the characters here feel so realistic like there's a character in here who's gonna get like a root canal and he, like when they go through his google search history he has searched like possibilities of dying from a root canal and as somebody that like would think that <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> I get this man so yeah that's pretty much it all right guys those are all the books that have haunted me in one way or another and that i really appreciate to have in my life because sometimes you're just laying in bed at night and what better way to not go to sleep than think about books that haunt you so um have you read any of these books what are some books that have haunted you i really want to know and uh yeah i want to read your haunting books <laughs> i actually really if i had to recommend one book out of all of these i would probably recommend the changeling by victor lavelle this is such an amazing book i really 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 love it so yeah without further ado i bid you adieu i would like to leave you with a friendly really reminder that i post videos every monday wednesdays and fridays and that i will see you in another galaxy far far away thank you so much for watching Bye, guys.